Hey guys, welcome back to another Sims speed build. Um, the last speed build that I did was actually specifically for my 100 generations challenge, but this one is just for fun. It has, I have no intention of using it for anything specific. I might use it for fun. Um, I might put in some random miscellaneous Sims into the 100 generations world because I am building this house in Newcrest, um, where Anya and Emery do live. But I did not do this with any intention of involving them with this house or anything of that sort. So um, please don't get confused. It's just for fun. Um, and the reason why I am doing um, another European, or I guess a European cottage, um, is because I did one already, um, which is up on the gallery if you want to find it. It's called European Cottage, and this one will be called European Cottage 2.0. Um, I built that one for fun a while ago, and I decided that since I didn't get the chance to record that one, I would do another one. So I looked up pictures on Google for cottages, and I found something that I thought was really beautiful, um, and I tried my best to make it look very similar to the house. Um, it doesn't look exactly like the house because I didn't want to, you know, steal ideas like that, but it does look similar, but different. And I added a few things on my own, and they're two completely separate places, I can tell you that. Um, so, um, this house is something that is different from what I normally do. Most of most of my builds are relatively modern or um, I like using blues, grays, and blacks, but this this house is different. It's a lot of um, browns and tans and a lot of uh, Victorian looking things, things that I personally probably wouldn't use in, if I had a choice, um, but I thought that since I normally do that, and my husband's always telling me, why do you always do the same thing? I would do something different. So here is something different. <laughs> um, and so this build actually took me about two hours to do, um, but I have sped it up so it um, doesn't take you two hours to watch, because that would be silly for you guys to sit here and watch it for two hours. So I have sped it up to 350% which is why it looks like I am zooming around really quickly um, so just might be aware in case you get motion sickness that there might be some spinning I'm not sure I haven't watched it I just remember recording it <laughs> so in let's see so you can see right now that the roofs look really silly. This was my attempt to make the roofs look similar to the pictures that I had seen. But since Sims roofs are kind of silly, they don't really do what you want them to do most of the time, I had to kind of take a step back and figure out what looked best for Sims. And so that's why we end up with um, something that looks like this. Um, <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. I love, love, love the brick that came with the dine out pack. Um, that that brick that looks worn and used, kind of industrial, but also not industrial. I really love it. I I use it any chance that I can because of how much I like it. So I thought it would look really good on the front of this house, um, and then the rest of the house is just brick. And then of course, because this is a European cottage, we do use a lot of um, stuff from the Get Together pack and the Vampires pack and the Vintage pack and City Living. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat caught. Um, so yeah, we use a lot of things from different packs. Um, <coughs> there is a few things from other packs Definitely stuff from the base game pack, of course, but um, I tried not to limit myself with packs because I wanted to get it to look the most European as possible, so um, it's definitely not a starter home, which is what I intended it to be at first, but then I fell in love with it, and I was like, no, I have to do it the way that it needs to be done, so sorry about that. I will do a starter home um, speed build 
soon, I promise. And right about here actually is when I decided that I just couldn't, I couldn't do it because the fireplace didn't work and it, I had to go with the more expensive fireplace um, because this small modern-ish fireplace didn't look right and this one from the vintage pack looked the best. So that's what I went with. And I struggled a little bit with um, decorating the fireplace mantle. Um, I wanted to have some kind of decorative figurines there, but um, I was having trouble with the cheat for putting things in different places. So this is me lower, I mean raising something that normally doesn't get put on mantles, but I wanted it to be there because I thought it looked good. And then it was floating in midair and I was like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> so in the end we go with um, the train set here where you can add an engine and, and a caboose with some parts in the middle. I thought it looked good, um, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm not super happy about it, but you know, it's whatever. You can change it if you want to. And then here I'm putting in the little ottomans, um, I guess you could call them, because I wanted to have, to have some sort of detail underneath the windows that looked um, good, would look kind of like a bay window, but not a bay window. Um, I thought they looked pretty European, I guess. Um, I also wanted to make sure that there was enough room downstairs because it's already small enough as it is um, and there wasn't really a place to have a bathroom and there really wasn't a place for a dining room either and you'll see that later on I have to kind of improv a dining room but it it looks good in the end and I, I think it would be fine um, so yeah the left side is going to be where the kitchen is and the right side, is, of course, is the living room. And then that T-shaped area is going to be a bathroom. And so you're like, well, where's the dining room going to be? And I'm not going to spoil it now. I'll just wait for you to be surprised. So I definitely don't prefer closed concept homes. I am open concept all the way. I like having my living room and kitchen relatively in the same area. Dining rooms I'm okay with being separated as long as there is a nook in the kitchen for breakfast, like a little breakfast nook. Um, but since this is an old inspired European home, not very many were um, open concept. It was actually very commonly closed concept. So I went with closed con concept in this particular house, which is probably why in the end I had to come up with a place for the dining room because my brain just thinks oh open concept it's all good we can stick the dining room anywhere <laughs> but um we'll just have to wait and see so i went with um the walls from the vintage glamour pack because um, i like how they shine and shimmer um when you tilt the camera which ways and makes them shine and I thought it looked good with the European aspect because we do we kind of do newer vintage European downstairs and then upstairs walls are a little bit older European vintage so um, you can I mean you can always change the wallpapers if they aren't what you want or if you don't even have the pack you can definitely add your own wallpaper to it I mean all you have to do is download it from the gallery um, unfurnished and you should be able to start pretty fresh from there. So if you notice, I turned my end tables there next to that three-seater couch outwards. Um, that is because in real life, um, you wouldn't put your end tables so close to the t couch that you couldn't open the drawers. So I turned them outwards to make them, you know, a little bit more realistic in the fact that you can actually open the drawers, even though Sims don't open drawers. Um, and um, if you noticed, I sized up that rug in the middle, that black rug 
that came from the city living pack, if I'm correct, um, using shift bracket on the right or the left, that'll make things bigger or smaller. You can't make something that is, you can't make something smaller than it comes, but you can make it bigger, and if you go too far, you can make it smaller, basically. Um, and I use that hack or cheat, I guess, a lot. I actually really enjoy that cheat because sometimes the rugs just come too small and you're like, well, this is useless. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? So that, I really, really, really like that cheat. I also like the alt, pushing the alt key to move things freely cheat. Um, it's actually made my life a lot easier. You do have to keep in mind though that sometimes if you move things in the way your sims can't use them very well. Um, so I, ha I did not test this but I'm pretty sure everything in the house works just fine. So here we are creating the downstairs bathroom. Um, I didn't want to use any ceiling lights in the bathroom. I didn't think that that was very um, old fashioned, I guess. I, so I went with the wall lights to give it a nice yellow dim light, even though that's not really a good light for day to day use. And I wanted to have a window in the bathroom so it wasn't so, you know, closed. I think that having a window in every room is relatively necessary. So I went with something from the get together pack, those um, those windows with the uh, stained glass. I thought they were really cute. And as you can see, I do a lot of mixing and matching. Like those mirrors are from the vintage pack, the lights are from the base game pack, the toilet is from vampires. It's all kind of mix, mixed and matched. And I think that's what gives the house a lot of uh, character because I'm not sticking with one specific pack. I'm kind of just doing what looks good and what it fits within what I think is really relatively a European cottagey type feel. So when you're building and you're doing your own builds and don't feel like you have to be limited to um, one pack, you can you know do all sorts of things. And that's what I really love about The Sims. And so, I think right about here is when I kind of realized that we didn't have a dining room. Actually, you know, it might be closer into the, when I'm doing the kitchen. Yeah, it might be closer to when I'm doing the kitchen, which I actually really enjoyed doing the kitchen. Um, I wish it was just a teeny bit bigger, but other than that, I think I did a really good job with it. And I used some of the older looking, um, I used like the older stove and the older fridge. Um, so, I thought it turned out good in the end. And I really hope you guys enjoy watching the build videos. Um, I know there isn't really a whole lot of story to it and it's mostly just you guys listening to me talking while I'm designing a house. Um, <laughs> but definitely let me know what your thoughts are on this house and if you have any ideas or challenges for me to do with other sim houses. I would love to do them. Um, I'm always trying to think of things to do, things that are different to do. Um, I try, I'm try. i trying not to be, you know, like a one-hit wonder, so please, 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 please let me know what you guys think and what you want, and I will do my best to accommodate, because you guys are my muses, as I like to say, you guys are my inspiration, and I want to make you guys happy as much as possible. So, um, let's see here. In the kitchen, I wanted to put the stove in the middle of the room, but it didn't really work very well so in the end I decided to put it where I put that window and um, and that's using the older stove um, that has wood underneath to give the impression that it's a wood fire stove um, which would be really cool if it acted like that in The Sims but it doesn't outside trash can because I try I always forget to put an inside and outside trash can and then I'm playing and then my sims are like oh, I can't throw this away there's no trash can and I'm like well sorry <laughs> so I did remember to put in a trash can for this build and um, I'm 
glad I did because sometimes you forget and it makes things complicated. And right here, this was so frustrating. Um, I think with the get to work pack or the get together pack or something, there was like vents added or things that made it look kind of more um, industrial or whatever. And yes, I know that the stove hood was not exactly European, but um, I kind of like the metal aesthetic to the wood, so I used it. And so here I was looking for um, kind of like a way to make it look a little bit more realistic by having a, like a vent on the outside, but all I could find were pipes and I couldn't find what I was looking for. And it's, it's a white square with vent holes in it. You know, those pieces of metal that are angled in such a way where you can't see in, but you can feel air coming through. I wanted to find one of those and I know, I know it exists, but I couldn't find it. So I kind of just moved on and finished painting the walls and I went with a dark gray to go with the, to the, go with the industrially type feeling that was in this, in this room. And I think it turned out pretty good in the end. And you'll see that I did paint the bathroom and the stair hallway, I guess, or the area with the stairs, um, the same color as the kitchen. And later when I was taking the screenshots, um, somehow the paint changed. And I think that might um, be because of something that I do down there in regards to the dining room. Um, and I think I fixed it before I uploaded it to the gallery, but if I didn't, um, it's super easy fix. You just change the paint color. You can just use the um, eyedropper tool or if you don't even have those paint specific or wallpaper specific things, just replace it with one that you do have because um, I'm sure not every single person in the world has every pack. So it would just make it simpler if you could just pick one that you liked and that's totally fine. I just wish that whatever it was didn't change on me however it changed I'm not sure and so up here is the kids room and the parents room um, I say kids and parents as if I have kids and parents in mind I guess it kind of did the Jameson family which is the sims out there on the sidewalk technically um, they are the sims that lived here but I actually moved them out so that they don't actually live in the world anymore um, but they were kind of, I guess, what was in mind because they have a cute little toddler. Um, but, you know, it could be used for anything. You can take the toddler stuff out of the kids' room if you wanted. Um, let's see here. The bathroom arrangement here was something that I struggled with a little bit because I wanted each room to have its own bathroom. Um, but the area upstairs was a little bit hard to, to handle and it was a little small. But... Everything works out in the end, which is which is always a good thing. Excuse me, I have the hiccups, and I do not don't know why. Cause normally I just hiccup once and then they go away, but for some reason today I just have hiccups. And so yeah, I had forgotten um, when I was building the uh, fireplace chim the chimney um, that the Sims game actually had chimneys and so I left the extension that I used for the um, first part of the chimney and then just put a chimney piece on top of that to give it a little bit different um, a different vibe so it just didn't look like a straight hole or straight I don't even know what you want to call it but it didn't look you know too uniform I guess is what I'm trying to say and here is when I decided that I needed a dining room because I didn't have one. So I scoot everything over one square next to the bathroom, which is probably not the best place to put it, but it was the best place that I had without, you know, destroying what I already had. So we just stick a table in there with some chairs and scooted the, scooted the um, stairs over to make room. And I think it just does just fine in the end. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I don't use any mods in my game. I am completely mod free. 
um, which, you know, is fine for some people and not fine for other people. I personally just don't have the time to just download a crazy amount of mods. Um, I There's a lot of useful mods out there that I've seen, like um, quarter tile movement, which I would love to have, but I just don't want to go looking for it. <laughs> um, let's see. So here I am doing the upstairs child's bathroom. Um, it was kind of hard for me to put things in the right place, but I do get it figured out eventually, like I always do. And I wanted to have, you know, the same kind of uh, European feel with the older bathtubs. And I use a lot of things from the vampire pack in this bathroom with the mirror and the toilet and the sink. I th actually, I think the tub might be part of the vampire pack, too. Um, and then the parents' bathroom, obviously, is a little bit bigger than the child's bathroom because you need two sinks and two mirrors and a toilet and a tub. And, you know, it's a little bit more crowded in, in the child's bathroom with that training potty. I hope that they can use it when it's right there because the sink might be in the way. Um, I guess we'll find out. And I actually really in enjoy doing um, double sinks in bathrooms. The only complaint I have is that I wish we could put sinks in the middle of two counters. That would be really nice if we could put sinks in the middle of two counters. Because then you could center things a little better when you have doubles instead of triples. And I say that meaning two tiles or three tiles or multiples of two and three. Um, I find in The Sims that sometimes it's better to have two and sometimes it's better to have three. And it's just so complicated. <laughs> it's really not, I'm just complaining. Um, and so this is the parents' room, of course, with the um, double bed and the um, double bed, the dresser, the mirror, and the lamp. Um, if you watch, you'll notice that I'm spinning the the mirror and the lamp on an axis um, without it going immediately into um, a 90 or 45 degree angle. That is done by using the Alt key with um, the left mouse button. If you are using the Sims 3 version, the Sims 3 camera version, because in Sims 4 you can use a Sims 3 camera, you can use a Sims 4 camera, and actually for the longest time I was using the Sims 4 camera for Sims 4, and I was watching, um, I can't remember who I was watching on YouTube, it was either, um, James from Sims Supply or Deligacy, um, and they were turning things on an axis, and I'm like, wait, how do you do that? <laughs> And so my husband was actually playing the Sims 4 using the Sims 3 camera because he had just graduated, I guess, from Sims 3 to Sims 4. And so he pushed Alt after me telling him what you could do with Alt. And I'm like, whoa, how did you do that? And so <laughs> me, Sims, rel relatively Sims better, and I've been playing Sims for years and years and years, learned something from someone who hasn't played Sims as much. And so that's why I always I always watch other YouTubers because they know more things than I do, and maybe I know more things than them. So it's like a little bit of give and take there. And so I wanted to give this house a little bit more um, character, I guess. So I go with some flower boxes underneath the windows um, to give it a little bit more of a cottagey feel because I feel like that was kind of an old thing to have window boxes some vines on there to make it look a little more rustic. Um, but none of them were really the ones that I wanted and I didn't feel like taking a whole lot of time into it. I mean you guys feel free to you know make things your own and that's what Sims is all about making things your own and you know having a world of your own. really excited to share this with you guys and I hope that you really enjoy it um, and just let me know what you like and what you don't like and 
I will keep it in mind for every time that I do a, a build. Um, I think my next video will be a um, character creation of myself. And here we have some screenshots of the house. Um, and here you'll see that weird thing that happened in the bathroom when I accidentally made one of the wall pieces a different color. So yeah guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share so I can build my audience and get more followers and so I can make more content for you guys to enjoy. Thank you guys so much and I really appreciate you guys watching.